Cool. All right, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for joining this next session. Um, my name is Simon Evans. I'm the Polar Sales and Partnerships Manager for Intrepid Travel, and today we're going to be talking all about Antarctica. Um, so I'm just going to play you a very short video, um, and then we'll get stuck into the presentation. Yesterday was out of this world. <laughs> We've just arrived. <laughs> I don't know how I'm ever going to explain this place. The sun has come out and we found a little seal. An absolute wildlife overload. <laughs> we saw four seasons in one day, so many penguins. It was just like something from a dream. How cool is this? It is all about getting out of your comfort zone. I honestly think it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. I feel like I'm David Attenborough myself now. We've officially set foot on mainland Antarctica. There are really no words to describe this incredibly special place. It's just been the trip of a lifetime. There we go. Um, I've seen that video so many times now, every time I watch it, it still gives me goosebumps. Um, hopefully that's given you a, a bit of um, yeah, inspiration and um, eagerness to get down to Antarctica, or at least to, to sell it, and uh, yeah, inspiration to um, to promote the, this beautiful place. Um, so just to, before I start talking in depth about Antarctica, um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Intrepid as a company, um, but just to give you a very quick introduction to to ourselves. So um, Intrepid itself, um, uh, core business is um, small group um, tours all over the world. So we're, we're kind of pioneers within that space. Um, we work with locally based leaders, um, have like minded travelers, and, and the whole idea is to give um, very immersive experiences. Um, we're very much a sustainable company. We're B Corp certified um, and uh, yeah, just a, a very well known company within the um, uh, sort of sustainable travel space. Um, so for the past um, few years, or well, for the last, sorry, couple of years we've been operating in, in Antarctica um, with our own operation. Previously we used to um, use a third party operator but we now have our own operations down there um, and so we're using a ship called the Ocean Endeavour. Um, so just a few key points on why um, you should choose the Ocean Endeavour and travel with Intrepid to Antarctica. Um, so firstly um, we have very competitive prices. Um, you'll have um, spoken or seen with a lot of the other companies uh, on um, this uh, conference. Um, com comparatively our prices are extremely low and um, we also have lots of single cabin categories and um, with low single supplements um, and we also um, have lots of low deposits sorry we have low deposits as well so it's um, a really attractive um, product and offering for your clients. Um, we have a leading guest to expedition ratio of eight to one, um, which is a really um, fantastic number for the, the kind of expedition cruising industry. Um, it makes it a lot more of a, a kind of personal experience. Um, also having that number of staff on board as well really helps us to um, speed up the operations that we do and just give um, more opportunities to, to what we can offer on board as well. Um, we have enough Zodiacs on board to have everybody off the ship at the same time, so there's not too much waiting around on board. Um, we don't need to stagger the landings. We can get everybody off the ship in one go um, and have everybody out, um, either Zodiac cruising or on the, the ice and on the land um, and experience it, um, Antarctica up close and personal. Um, we have fast operations, so on the ship we have dual disembarkation gangways on either side. Um, we have a big um, mudroom as well, and all of this with uh, the large number of staff on board just means that we can get everybody off and back on the ship again very quickly, um, which just means that it maximise your time off the ship um, and um, yeah, just enjoy Antarctica as much as possible and, and the destination. We also have a huge amount of deck space as well. Um, the ship is a slightly older ship, so we don't have any um, balcony cabins. But what that does mean is that um, it opens up a, a lot more deck space on board, so you can walk around 360 degrees um, on some of the decks. Um, we have a huge amount of space, which means that even when we have everybody um, out on the deck um, watching some amazing wildlife scenery, or wildlife sighting, or some amazing scenery, um, everybody can be out on board. There's no kind of jostling for the, for the best position. Um, everyone gets a, a fantastic view from different um, areas on the ship. 
Um, so just to talk about the ship in a bit more detail, so the Ocean Endeavour um, is a slightly older ship. Um, it's very much a, a kind of mid-range ship, so we're no, by no means trying to sort of sell ourselves as a high-end luxury product. Um, it's very much a, a, a mid-range but very comfortable offering, um, and the whole idea is to spend as much time off the ship as possible. Um, the ship itself has um, it, it's actually capable of carrying more than 200 passengers, but we cap it at that number um, just to make it a more comfortable experience and also to ensure that we can access all of the different landing sites within Antarctica um, to, provide, to provide the best experience. So we have 10 cabin categories in total. Um, they range from the triple interior cabins right up to the owner suite. Um, we have three single cabin categories. So this one in the picture is the, the highest single cabin category, which is the Cat 5A. And we also have a porthole um, single cabin and an interior one as well for those on a lower budget. Um, and then we also have a range of different twin cabins, starting from an interior, um, a porthole, uh, and then th up through the, the different categories. Um, generally, as you kind of go up through the different cabin categories, then we have, um, yeah, they become more spacious, um, the windows get bigger, bigger um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's just a few examples of the different categories that you can see in these pictures, um, which hopefully give you a good idea of um, what, what the, those cabins are like. Um, the ship itself um, has a huge amount of facilities. So as I said, it's actually capable of carrying a lot more than 200 passengers. Um, but that does mean there's lots of space on board and it makes for a very comfortable um, experience as well. Um, we have three or four different lounges. So there's one main lounge that we use um, for all the lectures and presentations. And that's also where the main bar area is as well. So the Notelius Lounge. Um, above that, we have the Aurora Lounge, which is really useful to use for um, breakout groups or the kayaking chats or catch-ups. Um, so it's great to have that kind of space. Um, up on the top deck, we have the Meridian Club, um, which is where we do our daily yoga classes. Um, and during the day, that's a really nice chilled out space just to relax. There's a couple of sofas up there as well. Um, we also have um, a big uh, restaurant that can accommodate everybody at the same time. Um, we have a sauna on board, which has some amazing views. Um, we have an outdoor um, saltwater pool. Um, and there's also a small jacuzzi as well. So lots and lots of facilities on board to make the um, experience as comfortable as possible for for your clients. Um, now, as I said, the, the kind of whole um, idea of, of one of these expeditions is to try and spend as much time off the ship as possible. Um, so by doing that, we have um, enough Zodiacs on board to have everybody off at the same time. So once we start the operations, um, we'll either try and do a, a well, we'll try and do a landing um, and Zodiac cruises um, twice a day. So once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Um, that's subject to the, the weather and ice conditions, obviously. Um, so there does need to be an element of flexibility with your clients. But um, yeah, we'll aim to do two landings per day once we get down into Antarctica. Um, so once we start calling people down to the mudroom in their different groups, um, each passenger has their own individual locker um, and they can leave all of their wet weather gear there overnight. Um, so your boots, um, your jackets, um, so when you come back in the morning, it's all nice and dry for you. Um, from the mudroom, it, you get all your gear on. It's a very short walk then down to the steps. Um, the disembarkation bay and from there you'll load onto the Zodiacs and then you'll head off either on a Zodiac land, uh, sorry, a Zodiac cruise um, or a landing onto the ice. Um, so all of our trips um, include um, a pre-night hotel in Ushuaia, so all of the trips start and end in Ushuaia. Um, so we'll include the hotel there on the first day. Um, we'll also arrange a transfer from the ho uh, from the airport to the hotel. Um, so as long as passengers arriving on the first day, then we'll, we'll collect and meet them and, and take them to, to the hotel for that evening. Um, the following day, we'll transfer from the hotel down to the ship. Um, and then once on board, um, all of the lectures and presentations will be included. Um, so on the sea days crossing from um, Ushuaia across the Drake's Passage to um, Antarctica, um, we'll have lectures and, and presentations from the expedition team on board. Um, those will all be included. Um, and then once we get down to Antarctica, um, all of the Zodiac cruises and shore landings are all included as part of the package as well. Um, we also have a citizen science project, which is something I'll touch on in a bit more detail shortly. Um, obviously, all meals are on four-ball basis, and we have daily yoga classes, which are included as part of the cost, um, and all of the trips are carbon offset as well. Um, in terms of equipment, um, we provide the, the muck boots on loan. Um, so these are um, what you'll need each time that you go off the ship um, onto the Zodiacs and, and onto land. Um, <clears throat> those are just on loan for the duration of the trip. 
Um, and then for the jackets, we'll provide um, an inner jacket, um, which the clients are able to keep. Um, it's very lightweight, easy to pack, so nice and easy to take home afterwards. Um, and then we also provide um, an outer parka jacket, um, which is just on loan for the duration of the trip. Um, so basically, in terms of what clients will need to bring, um, basically just lots of layers for underneath the, the jackets. Um, so usually a, a thermal layer and then maybe a, a couple of t-shirts and a jumper, just depending on, on what the conditions are like. Um, and then also a good pair of waterproof trousers as well. Um, so something like some ski salopettes or insulated waterproof trousers would be perfect. Um, and then it's just a case of lots of layers, um, hats, gloves, scarves, um, and uh, sun cream, sunglasses, that kind of thing, just to keep um, your clients warm. Um, in addition to um, the, the kind of shore excursions and um, and uh, Zodiac cruises that we include as part of the package, we also have a range of optional activities as well. Um, some of these are um, paid activities, others are included as part of the, the overall package. Um, but for the, the paid options, um, I'll just go through those quickly with you now. So the first one is the photography program. Um, so this runs throughout the course of the, the whole voyage. Um, and basically allows passengers of any um, kind of uh, photography level um, just to kind of improve their skills and get the best out of taking pictures down in Antarctica. Um, so we'll normally have up to 20 spots for this. So we'll normally have um, three up to three guides that kind of lead this group. Um, and the photographers will be together for, for the whole um, duration of the trip. So during the sea crossing days, they'll probably have a couple of workshops, uh, maybe looking at things like photo editing, that kind of thing. Um, and then once we're down in Antarctica, um, the guys will take the photography group out um, on the excursions each day. So they'll go out as a, a, a kind of private group um, and the guides will be providing them with expert tips and guidance just to get the best out of their photography while they're down there. Um, on all the trips as well, we also have a Sony ambassador um, and they come along with a huge amount of Sony um, camera gear and lenses. Um, and the guys that have signed up for the photography program are then um, able to use that equipment throughout the course of the voyage as well. Um, so um, we get really, really good feedback on this. It's um, a, a fantastic way for those that are curious about improving their photography skills um, to, to really improve their skills. And um, yeah, the feedback we've had all season has been fantastic for that. Uh, the second option we have is the overnight camping. So this is a, a one-off activity. <clears throat> I was fortunate enough to do this uh, myself when I was down in Antarctica last season. Um, really is a, a truly magical experience. Um, there's not many people can say they've spent a night on the ice in Antarctica. Um, and so, yeah, this is something that we'll offer um, on each voyage, normally up until about the end of January, um, just because later on in the season, the snow coverage starts to get a bit iffy and um, we can't always offer it. So, um, but yeah, again, this is a, a one-off activity and something that proves very popular. Uh, we also offer kayaking, so this runs throughout the duration of the trip once we're down in Antarctica. Um, the kayakers or the group, the, those that have signed up for kayaking will try and get out every day. Um, whether that be once or twice will very much depend on the landing site that we go to and the, the conditions. Um, but again, something, um, you know, just to get a little bit off the beaten track, um, away from the, the main group. Um, those that do um, join the kayaking program um, always speak very highly of it, come back raving each day. Um, they see and do some amazing things and get away from the main group and get a bit more off the beaten track um, and obviously potentially get some amazing wildlife experiences with the seals and whales and um, penguins in the water. For those that um, would like to give the kayaking a try but don't necessarily want to sign up to the full program and, and have to do it every day, um, we do also have a day paddle excursion. So this is just a, a one-off activity um, similar to the kayaking but in slightly more buoyant um, vessels. Um, and this means that, yeah, uh, clients can just sign up for a one-off excursion, head out for a couple of hours, just give it a, a try and experience it, um, but don't necessarily have to, to then come back and, and go out and do it again. So um, for those that, yeah, just want to give it a, a test and, and kind of have that experience, this is a, a great option for them. We've also just introduced for next season stand-up paddle boarding. Um, the spaces for this are very limited on each voyage, um, but again, just um, provides um, something slightly different. Um, again, there can't be many people that have said they've done this in Antarctica, um, and so this offers uh, a really unique experience. Uh, snowshoeing is also something that we offer again like the camping this is just early on in the season um, just because the snow coverage tends to get a, a bit less um, all of the previous options that I've, or activities I've just mentioned are um, all pre-bookable and the snowshoeing is actually the only one that we um, offer um, on board 
um, just because the conditions can be a bit temperamental for this. So, um, but yeah, again, this is um, something that allows you to get a bit off the beaten track and stretch your legs and, and get away from the main group and um, yeah, just see a slightly different side of Antarctica. We also have daily yoga classes. Um, these are included as part of the package price. Um, so each morning up on the top deck, um, our yoga class teacher will be holding sessions for anyone that wants to do that. The polar plunge, um, this is something we include on every voyage. And um, yeah, this is something that's become very, very popular, especially over the last few seasons. Um, for those crazy enough uh, to, to want to throw themselves into the ice cold water, then this is something that you have the opportunity to do as well on every voyage. Uh, and finally, the citizen science. So this is something that's um, really important to us. Um, it very much fits in with um, Intrepid's um, kind of uh, core um, uh, ethos and, and sustainability credentials. So on every trip, we offer a full citizen science program. So there's a number of different projects that we're um, partnered with um, that range from Happy Whale. We have one with a phytoplankton um where you collect uh, water samples we have another one with a cloud cloud observing um and we also have um, a seabird survey as well um so this just allows um uh, uh, passengers on board to um, collect scientific data um, which is then fed back into the central databases and used for scientific purposes and um, we also have lots of scientists that come on board as well on on each of the departures um, carrying out their own research and they'll usually do a presentation um, and just get a bit of insight into the work they're doing as well so this is something that's um we're we're really focusing on going forward um and um yeah the feedback we had for the system science last season was fantastic and um, so we're keen to, to really push that and expand that going forward as well. Um, for the itineraries, um, we have a range of different itineraries. Um, so we have um, our shortest trips are the for the Antarctic Peninsula. So these are 11 day itineraries. These are our most popular ones and the ones we have the most of. Um, for the end of next season, we also have a 12 day version of that. Um, for those that have a bit more time and budget and then want to explore the peninsula in a bit more depth, um, we have the 14-day Antarctic Circle. Um, so these head a bit further south down the peninsula. And we also have a trip that does uh, the goes on to the Weddell Seaside, which is a uh, slightly lesser visited area of Antarctica. Um, this is the itinerary I actually did last season. was absolutely amazing. It gives uh, quite a contrast on the eastern side to the western side, so I'd certainly recommend that. Um, and then we have the longer trips, which do the Falkland, South Georgia and Antarctica as well. So these are either 21 day trips or for January 25, we have a 23 day trip. Um, so lots and lots of different itinerary options, just depending on your client's budget um, and time restraints. Um, we also have um, live availability and rate sheets. Um, so please do get in touch and I can send over more details for these. Um, they have all of the prices for all the departures in chronological order on there. So really useful to, to use as a one-stop shop. Um, it's probably easier than our website, to be honest with you. So um, yeah, feel free to follow up with me afterwards and I can send you details. And we also have some amazing offers on at the moment. So we have a no single supplement deal so passengers can book um, a single cabin at twin share price um, and all the departures for the current 23-24 so season. Uh, we also have an amazing flight inclusive package for the forthcoming season. Um, and as agents, um, we do also allow you to offer an additional 5% discount on prices if needed. Um, we ask that you don't advertise that, but um, it's just something to help you get clients over the line if needed. Um, for any um, inquiries or <clears throat> queries, please feel free to, to give us a call on our general number or um, drop us an email on polar at intrepidtravel.com. Um, as I said, we've got low deposits for £800 per person for our um, shorter voyages, £1,600 for the longer ones. Um, and the final payment is due in just 95 days before departure. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it from me. Um, if anyone has any questions, please please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to be around all day, so um, if you want to jot anything down on the boards, um, I'll be happy to come back to you. And um, yeah, like I said, feel free to reach out and I'll um, be happy to provide you with any information you need. And um, yeah, I hope that's been useful for you. One question. Uh, Uh, yes, we do. Yeah, yeah, we have uh, for, uh, full agent rates. Um, yeah, please feel free to get in touch and I can send any more details of those.
Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so thanks very much for joining everybody. And um, yeah, we uh, I look forward to hearing from you. And uh, please feel free to reach out with any questions you got and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you and take care.